Welcome to the Daily Race. We're continuing our study in the book of Exodus. We're, we're not sprinting through it. As you guys uh, can tell, we're just, we're just taking one step at a time, one chapter at a time, marching uh, just intentionally through this, this book of the Bible as God is doing something incredible. He's taking his people from slavery to freedom. He's fulfilling the promise he made to Abraham uh, hundreds of years before that from his family, he's gonna create a great nation. And uh, this family, this group of people has grown to over a million people while in captivity in Egypt. Uh, but now, <coughs> excuse me, but now God is forming them into a nation. He's making a covenant with them. He's making an agreement with them. He's told them his expectations and how they're to live and how this nation is going to be different than the surrounding nations and, and cultures. Uh, he's given them, uh, he's made a covenant with them, a promise with them. If you follow these commands, then I will reward you. You will be blessed. But if you do not follow them, then, then you're not going to have my blessing. It is going to be difficult for you. Uh, he's given them an opportunity or a pathway back into relationship with him when they break the covenant. He, he knows that they're not going to be perfect. He, he knows that, that mankind is sinful. We rebel against God. We are selfish. We do uh, impulsive things, we make poor choices. And when we do, how do we get back right with God? He puts in the sacrificial system. Uh, at the center of this sacrificial system is the tabernacle, which will be, when it's in its permanent location in, in Jerusalem eventually, the temple. And we've been reading through all of these specific plants. This is uh, as detailed as God's covenant was with his people, his exact expectations, his expectations for worship, and reconciliation are just as detailed down to the dimensions of the of the tables the dimensions of the tabernacle tents exactly what materials to use uh, it goes into great detail we've been doing that for a couple days and it's easy we, we've been trying to, to lift our heads up every once in a while and say okay so how does this point to jesus what's the connection here and today as we look at this this next chapter chapter three it gives some more plans it gives the plans for the incense altar it gives plans for uh, the the wash basins, the anointing oil. Uh, it gives plans for the incense. Um, it gives plans for uh, funding it as well too. Because here's the thing: where does the material come from? Like where? How does this happen? Where does the cloth come from? Where does the gold come from? Where does the silver come from? Where does the oil for the incense come from? Where do the spices come from uh, that go into the incense? All of these details are, are included in here. The, the anointing oil. You know, it says, The Lord says to Moses, collect choice spices. Twelve and a half pounds of, myr of myrrh. Uh, that same spice that was given to Jesus when he was born. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That, that same uh, spice. Six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cinnamon. Uh, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant, fragrant calmus. And uh, twelve and a half pounds of cassia. Not sure what some of those things. I know what cinnamon and myrrh are, uh, but those other things—they're they're fragrant spices. Where is that coming from? Where are all these things coming from? From the people. Uh, the, the people are giving the resources for worship. They're putting their resources in God's hands so that worship can take place. Uh, there are things that are a heart. It says, "Give out of your heart," and most of these material things are, are out of their heart. Uh, bring some of the goods that you have. Bring some of the extra oil that you have. Uh, bring some of the spices that you have. Bring some of the fabric that you have. Uh, bring these to the house of God so that we can create a place to worship. Uh, so we can do exactly what God has called us to do. In this passage too, though, it, it also calls for financial contribution. And verse 11, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Whenever you take a census of the people of Israel, each man who is counted must pay a ransom for himself to the Lord. Then no plague will strike the people as you count them. Each person who is counted must give a small piece of silver as a sacred offering to the Lord. This payment is half a shekel based on the sanctuary shekel, which equals 20 geras. Uh, that there is this obligation as well to give. Uh, that it is part of, of putting your resources in God's hands. Uh, that you are going to contribute. Every single man uh, is going to contribute a, a silver coin every year to the working of the temple. So, so what does this, all this pay for? Well, it's easy to see the material things, but there's also the priests and their families uh, that have dedicated their, their life to the Lord. They, they're not out there making crops or building projects or anything like that. They're, they're occupied 24-7 with the work of God, and they need to support their work as well. Now, all of these things go into place. 
And it's, it's easy as we look at this, we're like, okay, where did all the resources come from? They came from the people. The people brought the resources. But let's look a little bit deeper than that. Where did the resources really come from? Well, how did the people get this gold and silver? How did the people get these fragrant spices? How did they get this fancy cloth? What were their jobs previously? They were, they were slaves. Slaves don't typically have a lot of gold and silver and fancy cloth and special oils and spices and things like that. But where did they get all of these resources? They got them as they were leaving Egypt. And they got them because God told them to turn to their Egyptian neighbors and, and ask for things. And because God had softened the heart of the, of the Egypt, of the people of Egypt, because he had put fear in them over the fact that he was God and that these were a special people, they willingly gave over their resources to the people. Uh, these resources that the Israelites are giving to the temple are resources that God placed in their hands in the first place. All of this stuff is God's. It wasn't anything special that the Israelites did. It was a direct uh, result of what God had been doing in and through them. That's why they had the stuff. So when God asked them to give it back, part of it was a, a heart thing. Hey, give as you feel that led. And part of it was an obligation. But underlying all of it, was that it was God's to begin with. So let's fast forward now. Of all the resources that we have, of all the possessions that we have, of all the financial assets that we have, all of that, just like the Israelites, is ours because of God. God has given it to us. And you might think, well, I went to work. I'm the one that got up early. I'm the one that worked overtime. I'm the one that did all that, that, that effort. I'm the one that went to school. I'm the one that got those, that training. I'm the one that, and you're, you're right. You, you had a part in that. You made some decisions. But, but who gave you those gifts and abilities? Who gave you the energy that you have? Who woke you up this morning, allowed you to have breath? Who created you in your mother's womb with specific gifts and abilities and talents? Things that you've just always been good at, naturally gifted at. God gave us those things. And let's think even bigger than that. Why were you born in this specific time, in this specific place, in this place on the planet? How would your life be differently if instead of being born here in the United States, you were born in a place like Haiti or, or a place like Sub-Saharan Africa where resources are limited? Who's, whose decision was that? Now, as we look at everything that we have, everything we have comes from God. And yes, we, we certainly have a part. We certainly need to, to make good choices, wise decisions, but fundamentally it's all God's. So when God asks us to give, when God asks us to put resources in his kingdom, it's, it's not a, hey God, you can have some of my stuff. It's God, this is all your stuff. And as we grow in relationship with him, our desire is that we use his stuff as he would use it. That we place it in his hands. And yes, some of it, he. He allows us just to enjoy it. God is a loving God. Uh, but some of it, he does want us to put directly in his kingdom, uh, to, to trust for, for worship, for uh, the work of, 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 of the church, uh, for the work of the kingdom of God. That's what God expects us to do with the resources that he has given us. So as we look at this passage here today and we kind of look at where all this stuff from the tabernacle is coming from, it's, that's a connection that, that's today. It's, it's not the same same way. We're, we're not bringing cloth and uh, gold and silver to, to church. Uh, we're not, we don't have this obligation where it's like a, a census and, and a tax. Uh, but it's the same heart. The same heart. Everything we have belongs to God. So I want to use those things as God would use them. I want to be generous as God is generous. I want to put things in the thing, put my resources in the things that will last forever. Store up treasures in heaven, not treasures here on earth. So just a great reminder here today as we're reading this part of the tabernacle and just thinking about all of the stuff that's there and where it came from. All right, let's go ahead and pray today. Let's get our day started. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much just for, the, for everything you've given us. And God, as we start this day, God, may we do it with a sense of gratitude. Whether there's a lot of resources in our bank account, whether we're in a place that, that seems uh, <laughs> fancy or what we've dreamed of, or uh, maybe we're just scraping by financially. But God, we thank you for where we're at. We thank you that you've given us what you've given us. God, may we be grateful for today. 
not not coveting what other people have, uh, not feeling bad that we haven't been uh, resourced in ways that others are resourced, God, but grateful that, that you have blessed us. And God, may we use those resources as you would use them. May we honor you with everything that we have, our, our time, our, our talents, and our treasures. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.